UTM parameters are an integral part of tracking your performance for your paid media campaigns across multiple different channels, tactics, audiences, all sorts of different stuff into a singular third-party platform like a CRM like HubSpot or a different platform like Google Analytics. Basically, we take a set of five standardized parameters, give them different values, and then have all of that information imported into those platforms so we can make smart advertising decisions based on how those strategies are performing with a set of data that is directly comparable and utilizes the same tracking type. Recently, I've had a number of people asking me about best practices or my personal preferences when it comes to UTM tagging, because there are personal preferences that can be taken into account. So I thought, what better way to talk about that than putting together a video? So in this, I'm gonna go through the fundamentals of some of the UTM parameter tracking, and then talk through some best practices or considerations when you're starting to use them in your campaigns. Let's start out with the fundamentals of UTM tracking parameters. I'm going to talk about what they are, how they work, and give you the structure behind it. First thing is, what are UTM parameters? Like I said in the intro, they are added to the end of URLs so you can track your performance in analytics or CRM platforms or something in the like. This is something to hopefully make all of your tracking come together in a single platform so you can compare between different platforms, tactics, all that good stuff. Like I said, they're appended to the end of a URL or the landing page that you're going to use in the sake of ad campaigns like we typically use. So I want to show you an example real quick first. I'm sorry the formatting of this is terrible, but let's run through this really quick. Basically, the landing page here would be the paidmediapros.com website, and then everything after that is going to be a tracking parameter. You can see the question mark after the .com. That signifies that anything after that question mark is considered tracking, and it's not part of the page. Instead, if you wanted to have a page in there, it would be .com slash and then something else. But the question mark helps separate the page URL itself from tracking parameters. We then have a handful of parameters in here, which are gonna be designated by UTM underscore. So we've got UTM underscore source equals Google. And then you'll see there's an ampersand, and then you'll see UTM medium, although it's broken up a little bit, equals CPC. Basically that ampersand means that the first tracking parameter, the UTM source equals Google, is finished, and the new tracking parameter begins. That's a way to segment them out. But rather than go down that path, I wanna focus on the parameters themselves. Basically the way these UTM parameters work are that the language is always going to say UTM underscore, that part is going to be stable, and then the parameter itself, which I have here in parentheses, is going to be different, and then there will be an equal sign, and then whatever the value is that you want assigned to that parameter. So you'll remember for the example that we saw just a second ago, this is the same URL from the previous slide, we now have a handful of parameters in here. We now have UTM source equals Google, UTM medium equals CPC, UTM campaign equals campaign name, UTM term equals keyword, and UTM content equals search ads. So in these examples, the parameter is going to be the source, medium, campaign, term, and content, and the value assigned to them is going to be Google, CPC, campaign name, keyword, and search ads. When you apply these to your landing pages in the ad platforms, there are a couple different ways that you can do that. So I'm going to show you really quickly in Google Ads and Facebook where those can be applied. In Google Ads, under the Ad URL options, there'll be a tracking template. That's where these are going to live. There is some different formatting that you would need to do for this, which I'm not going to get into today. But basically, this is where you would add in all of the different UTM parameters that you want to use or any custom parameters. For Facebook, when you're in the ad platform, you'll scroll down to the tracking section, and there's going to be a URL parameters field here as well, just in the same way there was for Google. You can also do things a little bit less manually in Facebook, which is kind of nice. They have a build a URL parameter function, where if you click on that, it will then open up a new window to where you don't have to type in UTM underscore source or UTM underscore medium or any of the other ones for campaign or content. You can simply add in whatever the value is that you want there. The only thing to keep in mind is you do have to create your own parameter. You'd have to click add parameter for the UTM term because that's not a preset option for the Facebook URL parameter builder. The end goal of all of this is so that we can have reports in that third-party platform like I mentioned before that look something like this. 
This is just a very basic Google Analytics source medium report that shows that the first three traffic sources on this website were from Snapchat CPC, TikTok CPC, and Spotify CPC. Basically, we know where all of these users came from. And then there are lots of different line items for the other channels, but I'm not gonna go through those today just because we're focused only on advertising on this channel. So all these other options are for other sources. So we've already talked about them a little bit, but I wanna talk through each of the different types of parameters. In the previous example and some of the sections I walked you through, you'll notice that there are five different parameters, and these are the main ones that we can use. Source, medium, campaign, term, and content. So let's go through each one of these with a little bit more detail, and I'll talk you through my personal preferences of how we would typically use these. All of these, I should preface, are completely up for your own personal preferences, whatever makes the most sense for you. And I do have some best practices at the end just to keep in mind while you're choosing these. So all the things that you see on the next few slides are going to be my preferences of how I set up UTM parameters. There's no right or wrong way, but this is at least one set to get you started. The first is source. And I always treat this as where did these users come from? What platform was I advertising from when I utilized this UTM source? So everything here is going to be, for me, Google, Bing, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Quora, anything along those lines. You'll notice that these are all lowercase. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then there are also a few other things you might notice. One, it doesn't say Microsoft, it says Bing. That's because I've been using these channels for quite a long time and I've always called it Bing. And moving forward, I want my data to be comparable year after year after year. So if you've never run any ads before, you can start with Microsoft if you prefer, since that's now the proper name of Microsoft ads. But if you're like me, you've been doing it for a while, it's just as easy to stick with Bing. You'll also notice that Facebook is by itself and there's no Instagram on this list. I personally consider Facebook and Instagram all lumped together. Again, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've been doing it before Facebook owned Instagram. So to me, this is all collective. Since I run the ads for Instagram also through Facebook Business Manager, I don't need to designate which platform they came from because I'll know from my placement strategies where they came from. But if you wanna adjust your campaign structure within Facebook, Facebook to have separate tagging by network, you can do that as well. And we do have a video that shows you how you can run ads on only Instagram if you choose to do that. And then you can change your UTM source for those as well. The next parameter is going to be medium. And this in my mind is how they got to the website. So since we're talking about paid advertising on this channel, all of these are going to be some iteration of a paid tactic. You'll remember from the source medium report that I showed you that there were some that were referral or organic. All all of those are great and valid mediums, but for our purposes on this channel, I just won't use them. I typically fall into the camp of somebody who always uses CPC for this because I like to have all of my tactics lumped together and then I segment out the different strategies I have based on the source, the campaign name, and other factors that we'll get into in a little bit. But other people like to have the medium be separated out and have it be a little bit different. Some people like to use PPC instead of CPC. And then even more, some people like to have strategies broken out based on the type of targeting that you are using, whether it's display, paid search, paid social. All of these are valid options that you could use. Just make sure that whatever you choose, you stick with over the long haul. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Again, I fall in the camp of using CPC for everything, but there's no right or wrong way here. Just think about what's going to be the most useful for you moving forward. Next is the UTM campaign. This one's pretty simple. In my opinion, it should be the campaign name. Makes sense? It's easy to tie back. Personally, I like to use the campaign name from the advertising platform itself. So when you go to the campaigns tab in Google Analytics or Facebook, or you're in the campaign group within LinkedIn, you utilize the name that you see directly in the platform. That way you can tie back exactly where the performance came from in the ad platform and the Google Analytics profile. But it doesn't always work perfectly. You could have a client or your business could need to use specific campaign names for Salesforce or HubSpot mapping. So make sure that you're using a campaign name that you'll still be able to tie back to the platform and you know where it came from because otherwise you're gonna get really lost in what's going on between the analytics platform and the advertising platform when you're trying to compare and optimize for performance. Next is the UTM term. 
And for most search campaigns and the default for Google Ads is that it will pull in the keyword itself. So one common mistake is that people are gonna think that it's UTM underscore keyword. It is not. It is UTM underscore term for the keyword that you have. For any other platform, whether it's display or social, I personally like to use the targeting options that triggered that ad to show. For search, the search query and keyword match is what triggered your ad to show. So for the other platforms like display and social, I like to keep that relatively similar and think about what targeting option it was that triggered my ad. Was it an audience? Was it a behavior or interest target? And which one was it? I wouldn't put just audience as the UTM term or just behavior. I would put what that audience was. Was it a lookalike audience that it was a 1% model of my customers? Was it somebody who had a specific interest in paid search advertising on Facebook and that's how it showed up? What was the targeting type that triggered your ad? That's typically how I will treat the term UTM parameter. Lastly, we have content, which for search campaigns by default is typically the H1 or headline one component of your ads. In the same vein as the term, I like to keep things pretty similar. Usually for search, I will still stick with whatever that headline one component was because it's really kind of difficult to make the report say anything different other than utilizing ad ID, which is just a big ugly number and it's really hard to tie that back to anything. So I typically stick with the H1 component for content content for search. And then on social or display, I'll nearly always use whatever the creative name is. So whenever you create a display ad or a social ad, you're allowed to give it a name. And I'll pretty much always use whatever that is to make sure that I can tie it back to performance, given that the ad copy doesn't neatly fit into a specific parameter, kind of like the H1 does for search. So now that we've gone through all of the parameters themselves, I want to go through the three main best practices that I like to keep in mind and that I usually warn people about and that I've also kind of teased as this video has gone on. The first is to be consistent. Use the same parameters for the same things. As I talked about earlier, source is always where they came from, medium is how they got there, campaign is whatever the campaign name was, term is the targeting that I used and content is the ad creative that I used. That is pretty much how I go through all of my setup. That's always how I use UTM parameters unless a client has specific needs otherwise. That's what I stick with because it's one, easy for me to follow because it's logical, but two, it'll be consistent no matter where I'm setting things up or who I'm setting them up for. This will allow us to compare performance over time. As I said earlier, with the difference between Bing and Microsoft, if I were to start changing all of my UTM parameters from Bing to Microsoft, they are not going to retroactively change. So for, let's say, the month of May in 2021, I had things tagged as Bing, and then once we got into June, I tagged them as Microsoft. In my report, it'll show two different line items over that two-month period. There'll be one for Bing and one for Microsoft, and even though they're the same, they're going to be a different line item, and that gets to be really frustrating as you're trying to review performance and optimize over time. And this goes for in-channel performance, like the difference between Bing and Microsoft, but also across channels. Think about all the different platforms you have tied together Together and wanting to be able to review and understand things at a high level. So here's basically an example of what I just talked about, but in an actual report. Over the course of time, somebody changed the UTM medium for LinkedIn from paid to paid social, and now there's two separate line items, even though it's the exact same set of campaigns. It's very frustrating to have to do this because then you have to go back in, try and group them together with a custom channel grouping, or you need to just total up the line items to know what's going on. So this is where things can get confusing. I don't have a good example of one because quite frankly, most of the folks I work with do a pretty good job keeping their Google Analytics platform clean, but this just shows two lines for the same thing. I have seen upwards of 10 different line items for this exact same set of campaigns because people just weren't consistent and didn't have a naming convention in place. The next is to remember that your format matters. Watch your capitalization, which I teased in the source section, because every time you have a difference in capitalization, it is treated differently, even if it says the exact same thing. Google as a source, all lowercase, is going to show up as a different line item than Google with a capital G at the beginning will. So you'll then have the same issue that we just had. There'll be two line items for Google all lowercase and Google as title case, and that'll be a bit of a pain. Additionally, know how different symbols are going to be read. If you put different types of markings and different symbols into your parameters, they may show up different. Some will default to be a space, others will not. 
So keep in mind how those are going to be pulled in. I'm not going to run through all of them now, but if you're thinking about using some type of special character within your tracking parameters, do some research and figure out how Google Analytics or your CRM or analytics platform will read that symbol before utilizing it. Lastly, don't be afraid to leverage dynamic tracking. There are a number of platforms that will allow you to utilize that. And honestly, the less you have to type in, the less chance you're going to have of messing something up and causing the double line item issue that we've talked about, or even more bigger problems than that. We actually have a couple videos on this platform that you can go check out. Facebook ads have dynamic URL parameters that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. Effectively, they use two curly braces or squiggle brackets, whatever you want to call them, to pull in the campaign name, ad name, ad set name dynamically, so you don't have to type it in, which is great. And then for Google Ads, you can create your own custom parameters that are based on the campaign name, ad name, keyword. There's lots of different options there. But again, this makes it so you don't have to set up custom tracking templates for every single portion of your campaign. You can have one tracking template that you know is right and then adjust your custom parameters to pull in information dynamically. Overall, UTM tracking parameters are massively important if you're trying to pull all of your data into a single platform. And although there's not really a right or wrong way to set them up, there definitely are some things that you need to keep in mind so that your data is going to be clean all shows up in the single line item that it should. It matches back to the different portions of the platform so you'll actually know what's going on and be able to optimize based on performance. But then you'll also be able to compare within the channels as well as across the channels of how things are performing and make bigger business decisions like budget and new channel strategy based on those types of data that you're seeing coming through. If after watching this video, you're still stuck on some of the UTM pieces and how they work, feel free to reach out to me in the comments. I'd love to be able to help follow up. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.